Hey there, and welcome back to Mastering Kinemaster Tutorials narrated in English. So has anybody ever talked to you about going over the ins and outs of a topic? Well, today we're going to go over the ins, the outs, the tops, the fronts, the backs, the force, and the side to side because we're talking about zooming. Now, zooming is a critical function of videography, and Kinemaster handles it in a lot of different ways, from simple to really complex. This video is going to go over all of them that I have found, so it's a pretty long video, but you're going to want to watch and sit and watch the whole thing because it's really important stuff. So it's about over 10 minutes long, but you're going to want to watch. Another reason why you're going to watch is that Kinemaster offered me 10 free promo codes to give away to my subscribers uh, for one month free of the pro version of Kinemaster, which you're really going to want to use and check out because that's awesome. So you're going to want to watch to the end so you can win one of those five today and five with my next video. So remember, like and subscribe now or at the end, like and subscribe then. And then now, because it's so long, I'm just going to jump right into the screencast. So follow me there to learn how to pan and zoom like a pro. All right, starting with the simple versions of panning and zooming in KineMaster, I've set up a project with two photos that use what's called the Ken Burns effect of pinching and zooming. And I'm going to show you what it looks like just to show that then it's a still photo. The van starts uh, zoomed out and then it goes in. And this pans across, this picture of me pans across. And this is used in still photos as clips in order to animate and create motion out of still photos. And so I'm going to show you how that is actually achieved because when you're using a clip in KineMaster, you cannot simply pinch to zoom here. You can't see my fingers right now, but I am trying to pinch and zoom and I can't do it. That's because you need to actually go in and you go to this middle menu over here, which is the pan and zoom menu. And what you can see here is that this menu gives you two positions, the start position and the end position. And those have to start, those correspond with the start and end of the clip that you are working with. And you have the opportunity to resize at this point, either the start position or the end position. And you, at this point, now that I am in here, I can do this with my fingers. So I'm actually, you can't see it, but I am pinching and zooming with my fingers, but you have to be in this menu here. So you have to come over to this menu in order to do this. And as you can see, then I check this up top and of note, the timeline scrolling does not work when you're in here. Um, and I hit the checkbox and then I get back to my normal situation and the timeline scrolling does work. It also works. I did in this clip is that I did a pan and you can see that it pans across. And actually in this, there is no transparency. I've talked about how there's no transparency in clips. There's still no transparency, but the background of the project is black. And, and now so I've set up a project to show you that this technique of Ken Burns style animation also works if the clip is a video. So I've added a video clip that's kind of like a rock music thing of me and it's zooming in and that is not done by pinching and zooming on the screen when I'm in the timeline. It is by going back into here and you can see that the same menu shows up and I have set my start position and end position and again you only have the these two positions to work with. So you can only set where it's coming from and where it's going to. And it's very cool and it's very useful, but it does have the limitations of having only the start and the end. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to try and overcome that and have multiple points along the way. However, at this moment, I want to show you one more thing that is useful as well. There are times, I'm just going to get back out of here. There are times when you shot something and you didn't zoom it when you're shooting it and you want it actually zoomed in and you don't want it to do a Ken Burns style thing of moving. So let's go back into that interface one more time and you'll notice that there's a little equal sign there. When I set that to equal, I'm going to actually select this end position first. When I turn on equal, it will resize the other piece of it to be the start and the end have the same position. Okay. So now I'm going to check to go back out and check my timeline. And you can see that I've entirely zoomed in the entire clip there. If I go back in here and I remember I can pinch and zoom at this point, if I zoom out using my fingers, then you'll notice that both the start position and the end position are the same. And so this is how the 
uh, zoom to overall zoom to the same dimensions on your video clip. And it also works with photos. I'm not going to bother showing that to you right now. So this is again, when you want to zoom in on content that you shot that you need to zoom in on and then you're done. And then your zoom point is equal throughout the whole piece right there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to version two of panning and zooming. And this time we're going to use layers instead of clips in order to do that. So I am adding a layer of this, of the same video that I used in the last version of the project. And I'm going to explain it in the world of layers and clips. Now I'm going to move quickly. I have videos on layers and clips and keyframes. You can watch along now, but if you need help understanding those, then check back for the older videos. First of all, is that this black background is not going to be seen, but it needs to be there because layers cannot exist without a clip underneath them. All right. So it's just a placeholder and I just use a black background. The actual stuff that I want to see and that I'm going to animate and scale is the same video that we used before. Now, as you can see, as it's placed as a layer, layers have immediate ability to move them around. I'm using my thumb to move it around. They show a horizontal centering bar and a vertical centering bar, and they also have the scale tab on the scale and rotate tabs on the edge of them. So I can scale it right here. If I scale it right now and scroll through it, then it's been scaled up the whole time, pinch and zoom, pinch it down and make it smaller. And so the flexibility of being able to make the pinching and zooming on this is much easier than it is with clips. In addition, Keyframes allows you to have multiple points of animation along the way. And also with clips, your animation is limited to using the start frame and the end frame. But what if I have a situation like this, where I want this video to be at this scale for this long into the video and then scale up here and then at the end scale to the side, but it has nothing to do with the start point and the end point of the videos. The only way to do this is with layers and it's a great way to do it. And so I'm going to show you that right now. Let me actually turn the audio off on this so that we won't hear the audio when we go for it. And so what I'm going to do is in this, this is all related to keyframes. Again, I got a keyframe video if you want to watch it, but I hit the key here. Okay. And this little keyframe right hand panel shows up. And so what I want to do is I want to have this video stay the same size until I get to this point, the random point right now, but and. So I add a keyframe here and what that does is it keeps the size consistent through those whole things. Then immediately following that, I want to scale up and then I use my fingers to do it and it automatically places that red dot for me as a keyframe there. And then if I scroll to the end, then it's scaled in the whole way there. So we've got this where I'm at this size and then I scale up and I'm at this size. And now at the very end, I want it to slide over. Remember to put in another placeholder there that keeps the same size the whole time until you get over here. And then immediately at the end of the clip, then we will put in and maybe put in it over here. I will take this and I will drag this over sideways. And actually I'm going to scale it back down as well. You can see how flexible this is with being able to make all of these changes. And then it'll do everything that we asked for. I'm smaller here. I go larger. I stay larger. And then at the end, I scale out at the end. And that is a much more flexible style of animation, as you can see, than just having to work with the front and the back, uh, the first frame and the last frame and have it animate evenly in between, which is all that's available in a clip. So why not use this all the time? Let me jump out of the animation and I'll tell you. Okay, I decided to come out of the screencast to describe the problem I found myself in many times. And this was it, is that I had a clip that I wanted to zoom in and out of many times. As we've seen, clips only allow a start point and an end point for panning and zooming. So hey, doesn't matter, we'll just put it into a layer. If you put it into a layer and then you put a black background clip behind it and don't even ever see that, then there's no problem at all, right? The problem is I wanted to use the cool KineMaster transitions in between my clips. So what was I going to do about it? I had to think about it and put some thought into how can I get the transitions, use my content as if it's in a clip, but then actually get the functionality of the keyframes being able to zoom in and out multiple times like it was a layer. 
So now if you understand what the situation is, or if you found yourself in it, or if you have it, start thinking about how you might want to use it. I'm going to show you how to do that. If you're not interested in this technique, you can fast forward to the end and I'll show you how you can possibly win a free subscription to KineMaster Pro. But if not, I'm going to teach you something really cool right now. And so now we're going to get back into the screencast. Okay, I'm going to try and do this really quick because I know this is getting long. So here's the idea of combining versions one and two. You have a project that you have to, you want to use transitions. So I've got my van going into my movie, going into another transition, but I want to have the animations that I had from the last uh, from the last version that we did, but we really can't do it because a clip doesn't animate like that. So all we can do is a start frame and an end frame, and we want to do those multiple animations. What are you going to do? And I'll tell you right here is that KineMaster provides this opportunity to duplicate as layer. And so what that does is it makes a copy of the content and puts it into a layer above. And so what we're going to do is, first of all, it starts because it's a layer, it starts at a little bit smaller. And so you first want Want to scale out and we go ahead and we scale out and a way to check that they're identical to each other is to go to opacity uh, alpha opacity which means transparency you lower that and then you want to move your new scaled up video so it more or less matches with what your original content was i'm not going to do it too precisely right now because i'm trying to do it in the interest of time so then you go ahead and you check that and then you turn the opacity off the opacity was just to check to see if they were on top of each other in the proper place. You can see a little shift in mine, but I would fix it if I was doing the whole thing. Also, the audio you want to turn off on likely the top copy. So I had already turned the audio off, but there we have that turned off on the top copy. So then what you do is these will be exact copies of each other. And so you go ahead because you wanted to use the transition. You go into your trim menu on your layer. You trim to the left of the playhead. So there's a little bit taken off there so that the transition will work. You trim to the right of the playhead. And then there you can't even tell that there's a change in between because can master is really seamless like that then you go ahead and you go into the into the layer and you do your animations with the keyframes as you had originally intended to do and you wanted to have your scaling the way that you do make sure that you put a keyframe at the back of it so that it winds up in exactly the same place as it started and then you can go ahead and scale up here and then uh, scroll over and then scale up there and then you will have your scaling points your zooming points at the parts in the middle and you also have your transitions there and if you want wanted to add clip graphics to this clip as long as they were in the pieces over here then you would be good to go so i found this was a great way to bridge the gap between the methods of scaling and panning and zooming that were available to me i hope that that's helpful because i think that a lot of times that you want to zoom things at places that aren't necessarily just the start and the end frames so this gives you the opportunity to do that with kinemaster the amazing Amazing program that it is. All right, I hope I was able to explain it so well that you're a panning and zooming master. So now, as promised, I'm going to tell you how to win one of those five great promo codes to get the pro version of Kinemaster for 30 days. So what you need to do is you need to be a subscriber and you need to add a comment in this video that says, I want to win. And then I will pick five people who put in the comment that they wanted to win. If you have any other comments that you're looking for more information, questions, if you have an idea for a topic for a video that you really don't understand. I've done user submitted videos before. Otherwise, again, make sure you subscribe, come back. I'm doing a lot of these now that I'm stuck inside. So um, look forward to it. And if you don't get this copy, then uh, come back for the next video and I'll have five more copies for you. Get out there and make some awesome stuff with the best mobile video application ever. KineMaster. See you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Can the master.